Good morning, folks. Ladies and gents, welcome to the week ahead preview from your friends at Privateer FX. We'll recap some of last week's uh, main events and the most interesting charts. And we'll take a look at the week ahead and see what's on the what's on the radar. I was having some technical difficulties, but I think everything's working now. So let's get right down to it. We'll try to keep this uh, somewhat brief. I apologize for last week. Um, we had some bad storms. I was in uh, snowy, icy Buffalo, New York for a hockey tournament and we were delayed and I then UK PM told cabinet ministers she will rule out no deal son a couple days so last week was not good but I'm back in the saddle feeling good we do have another snowstorm here in Chicago and then it's supposed to be 50 below Fahrenheit wind chill on Wednesday which uh, I don't really remember it ever being that cold We'll see. It's probably a lot of drama. Might lead to nothing, but you never know. It's uh, That's cold. That's not leaving your house type weather. Why do I live here? It's a question I ask myself on days and weeks like that. Anyhow, let's get into it. Um, hope everyone had a good trading week, good, good weekend. I think we have some... Uh, potential fireworks this week, so we got to stay on top of it and stay on point because this market is completely manic, as you will see in some of the ch these charts that I show you. Um, as far as last week goes, one of the most interesting, and we'll start out with this Aussie dollar daily chart, the on Thursday, uh, I guess it would have been Friday morning Asia, the we got kind of what uh, the friend of ours, Greg McKenna, is talking about, calling it the PBOC QE light. Um, People's Bank of China decided to launch central bank bill swap, which I had not heard ever from them. Uh, a tool allowing primary dealers engaged in open market operation to swap the perpetual bonds they hold for the central bank bills. In essence, what this is, it creates uh, very favorable conditions for the financial institutions to boost the real economy. Uh, and what that is sounding more and more like is purely quantitative easing, what you've seen from, you know, all the other central banks, uh, the, the, the G5 central banks over the past uh, 10 years. And that kind of got the dollar selling off. Um, dollar China was selling off. Obviously, China strengthening. You can see what Australian dollar did. So on Thursday's uh, you you know session, we had this outside bearish engulfing day lower, and then we had a bearish engulfing day higher, or sorry, a bullish engulfing day higher on Friday. So you know we've been very bearish the Australian dollar, um, looking to sell rallies and risk. I'm a little bit concerned with what. Uh, what came out of China, um, you know, they can they can really move the needle. But you can see here we have a trend line on the dailies that looks pretty good. That's coming from this, uh, you know, let's not forget this high here that was put in was after the G20 meeting uh, in early December. And then we made that peak, and that's when risk really got hammered. Um, you know, obviously this fractal down here is the – is the flash crash that happened in the twilight zone in Asia. But this trend line looks pretty important to me. Um, I can't even draw a trend line off these lows because this low is, if you look at it, whatever charting service you look at, this low is different. So for me, it's very difficult to, and we've discussed this, to draw Fibonacci's, to draw trend lines, to, you know, high um, highs and real highs and lows. You know, I guess the most important thing is when you get a bar like this, big down bar, we just look at the closing price. So, and this low close for uh, 2019. So for me, the, the lowest daily close for 2019 and the close here 
at just above 70 cents are uh, this is like the big area and I'm going to kind of ignore that low because it was there for about five minutes anyhow so we're bumping up against resistance here in Aussie um, and that was on the back of that China news you know the dollar index did get hit um, a bit here's the big down bar the dollar index you can see in dollar China dollar China got down um, we haven't taken out the year's lows just yet but we're getting close uh, the 200 day moving average is just below here uh, I don't know why I don't have that on the chart but we can add that real quick let me just do this bear with me one second uh, 200 day moving average let's just modify that that's a nine day input 200 plus one boom there you just saw my little tricks um i again i use i use trading view and i use bloomberg um anyhow 200 day moving average today comes in around 673.50 so you know in the past anytime we've um you know we see we closed above it back in june and it hasn't been really all that close um this could get interesting and this would if we start breaking below this 200 day in dollar china my um my more um bigger picture call of a, a lower australian dollar um is gonna have to be put on hold so we're watching this nimble as always market is very very manic um but if let's take a look at the some of the weekly charts and uh pop over here get the weeklies and there were some interesting moves on uh, last week here's Auss aussie versus kiwi um some of the analysts out there are, are talking about rba still sounding dovish whereas the rbnz is maybe turning a little bit more hawkish i don't believe in the latter statement but the chart does tell us the story of last week we had a bearish engulfing very big bearish engulfing took out two weeks of lows in aussie kiwi um we also had um, in dollar Canada. Um, now we're not coming off of a cycle high or anything, but you can see we had a bearish engulfing in dollar CAD, dollar dollar RAND, and that that might be some you know oil related dollar RAND. Again, it's not coming off any kind of local or cycle high, but we did have a bearish engulfing, and uh, we're right at the 200 week moving average. We're opening just below that in dollar rand. So um, let me stick with the weeklies. But if we take a look at gold, gold had a big rally, big bullish engulfing week, as did silver. We are now taking out some um, these old highs. And I've got targets here, you know, kind of 13, 10, 20 area. You know, all the way up to on the weeklies, you, you know, we can see this extend all the way up to 1370. So we have, we own some topside gold. And it, it's strange because it, if we overlaid this, if you had, um, you know, gold versus the S and P's, the S and P's were extremely bad um, last week. Although, you know, here's the weekly chart. We kind of closed on change. Let's pop over the daily. So I want to do show. I want to show you some of the daily reversals that we saw on. Uh, Friday but we had a big up you know big big up day in in uh, s and P's and if we have a gold chart we had a big up day in gold so and a new high daily close for 2019 um, in fact we haven't closed you know just we closed right around 1300 we haven't closed that high <clears throat> since you know way back in June so we bought some top side around 1290 looking for you know least a retest of 1312 if not all the way up here 1325 and then you know we got these other highs um, so we got a couple a couple months on that but as far as the friday's price action um, and the currencies we'll go back to the currencies we had a bullish engulfing day in aussie yen so that's you know very risk on uh australian dollar again up against this trend line and uh another the other antipodean is uh the kiwi dollar 
you know, that's bumping up against this old cycle high here. So really reversing a lot of the a lot of the moves that we saw from the beginning. You know, we had the, this move up, then we had a little bit of a correction in in Kiwi, and then now right back up. And you know, these are pretty powerful bars. Um, unfortunately, these moves only seem to last a couple days. So <clears throat> it's been hard. I've been, uh, I, you know, I've gotten it pretty wrong this month, and somehow. Uh, I'm still in the black, and one of my goals for every January is to just finish the month with some sort of profit. It helps, you know, as a, as a P&L resets to zero. This is, you know, this goes for any hedge fund, any proprietary trading firm, any family office. You want to finish January in the positive. It gives you, it puts you front foot. It allows you to leverage some of those gains into the next month and yeah I think we're gonna have a lot of action we're you know we're obviously approaching month end um, what are we at the 28th uh, we're on the 28th now and so we're gonna have some month end flows we're gonna have equity rebalancings we're gonna have uh, you know dollar rebalancings and we'll get to that um, you know more we'll, we'll touch on that I'll probably do like a, a midweek um, video in the next couple of days um, but let's get back to the currencies which is what we tend to focus more on than anything else futures now trading at 121.12 uh, down one full tick even the S&P futures down 0.1 percent two and a half bucks now trading at 26.61 barometer big up day on Friday you know I think this can Trade up to 790510 before we get a pause. We had this old breakdown here, 7856, and now we're kind of trading just back above it. Uh, Euro yen was interesting on Friday. Uh, we um, we <coughs> me and our co and our colleagues we brought this is this 12465 to 120 call it 12492. And then some highs here right around 125.07. You can see on Friday we took out, uh, we got up to 125.34 before we pulled back to just below the figure. So this area right in here, this one, this whole 125, the figure, give or take 20, 30 points either side, it's a very important um, inflection point. Um, let's take a look at the euro. You know, just an absolute nightmare to trade. We were so, so bearish on the ECB day. Closed down here. You know, almost had a bearish engulfing day. Broke trend line support on the short term, you know, from the middle of the month. And, you know, tested some fibs. And then we had this massive bounce on the China news on Friday. And it looks like we're, you know, ticking up again. On the open uh, British pound, we've taken out the 200-day moving average, which everyone's been talking about. We haven't been above that in ages. Um, look at, I mean, all these fibs and everything. I, I mean, I got to get rid of all this stuff. This is, I haven't updated this. Again, I've got um, because I use two charting services. Sometimes I don't get to the trading view one, but you know, we're back up here above 132. This is on Brexit optimism. Um, Know, we'll see how that turns out um, but you know looks looks quite strong um, what else are we looking at on the dollar cad big big down day this is a these this kind of three-day pattern is pretty ugly we all also close below this little low the bigger level for me is down here 13175 and 131 55 60. Um, this whole low, but you know this has been a pretty powerful move down, and that a lot of that is oil driven, and then some of the recent dollar weakness. Um, we uh, let's take a look at dollar yen here, one nine fifty. This one ten level looks really really important. Um, something going on here with my. But if you just take a look at here, you got this little cycle high here, 
So this whole 110, the figure to some of these old lows, 110, 15 to 30, this is big resistance. Um, you know, we, we, we continue to like selling risk rallies. The China news makes me a little worried about that. But, um, you know, if you look at S&Ps here, 26.78, we didn't quite get there. We do have a FIBA that comes in around 27, the figure. Uh, let me draw that real quick from the all-time highs. Here, around there, down to this low. Sorry, not from the all-time highs, from the September highs. This 2706, which also matches another FIBO from a larger, from the all-time high swing, looks extremely important. And then uh, 2740 <coughs> is a 200-day moving average. So right here in this 26 kind of 60 zone where we where we closed up to 2678 the year 2019 highs i'm not really getting involved here uh you know if i see some bearish price action then we'll look to get short again but i'm getting the feeling that between now and month end you know in the next few days we might see this 2700 you know maybe even on a stretch up to 2740 we have a lot of earnings most of the earnings um it's the biggest earnings week. We have a lot of tech names. Apple is on Tuesday. Um, they were expecting more guidance cuts from Apple. You know, nothing. There's been no good news out of uh, any of their suppliers. Um, probably the most important thing this week is this uh, the China trade talks, which are on the 30th and 31st, and then we're you know just just about a month away from the March 1st deadline. We still think it's about a 50-50 um, chance of, you know, any sort of real um, positive news coming out of there. Here's a, a Bloomberg article. Let's just scroll down here. I'll give you the base case. Let's take a look at the, uh, see what the base case scenario is. Here it is. Even if Lighthizer and Lou reach an agreement this week, it'll probably take time to brief the two presidents. And, you know, they, they have about a month. Uh, vague official statements is the best way to determine how much progress was made. Um, China's calling the talks extensive, in depth, and uh, detailed. But you know, I believe you know the market is expecting to they'll hear some positive talk out of uh, out of these relationships or out, sorry, out of these meetings this week. Um, you can go to the Bloomberg web website and take a look. But um, I'm still not all that positive on. On the uh, the China news, we also have the f the FOMC on Wednesday. The, you know, the other thing that came out late week was the U.S. government is uh, partially reopened. We'll we will get some economic data out of the U.S. We do have the Fed on Wednesday, and I think that what we're going to see is we'll probably see some dollar selling, uh, just following through some of late the late uh, really Friday's action. Uh, probably some dollar selling into the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Um, you know, with the government shutdown, uh, I think it was Goldman Sachs came out and they lowered their GDP for Q1. Again, due to the government shutdown, <clears throat> that should keep the dollar on the back foot, at least for the next few days. But I am thinking that Wednesday it could be extremely important uh, where we may get a reversal in some of the dollar selling and then... Uh, and they will not sound as dovish as the market has uh, been anticipating um, leading into it. So we also have Australian CPI. That's important. we got some Eurozone GDP numbers. We've got CAD GDP, which is a monthly. That doesn't really matter much. And then, of course, on Friday, we have the non-farm payrolls. And I believe it was um, Cudlow, you know, kind of talking up the market and talking of the jobs market um, last week. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we have a pretty good pretty good um, uh, jobs number. Uh, we do not have Canada jobs this week, which is good, because that's usually a real cluster when the two come out at the exact same time. So expect further dollar weakness into, um, into the Fed meeting. And then I'm going to be looking to 
add some tactical long dollar positions again on Wednesday leading up to the uh, jobs number on Friday and that's kind of my it's kind of my play uh, here's a euro fibs of the recent swing yen slipping a bit now trading at 109.49 um, yen is up 0.1% on the day to we've got some not, Japanese data coming up in about 12 minutes time Japan's December services PPI expected at plus 1.2% you know, year on year same as previously um, leading up to FOMC you know we'll be looking at some downside structures for that uh, you know similar to Aussie you're going to hear a lot um, about the Australian dollar from me, at least in Q1, because again, I, I think we're, you know, we're one real kind of headline, China headline, or, you know, a trade headline, or a growth panic, or something, or just a over general risk off event from the Australian dollar dropping, I don't know, you know, five to seven percent in, you know, in short order. And no one will have that on. Market is not short anymore. They've been whipsawed. Um, what I'm thinking is um, getting some of my reach, research together. But I, I was talking to my colleagues, my fellow privateer colleagues, and uh, maybe putting out a, a special Australian dollar and Australian economy report at some point in the next, uh, potentially even this week. Um, you know, I've been gathering a, a lot of research and obviously, you know, we're on top of the technicals, but we want to get some of the fundamental backdrop as well and make sure people are prepared for this because uh, I do think this is going to be a great trade. I'm just not, I don't think it's quite ready. And as you can see here, this little daily trend line breaking above it. And I don't see why we can't go retest this old cycle high here at 7235. Got this nice little Fibo, depending on if you agree with this low. Um, th this would be a nice little stretch and then, you know, even maybe even a chance to get to 73, which would be, you know, the 200 day. And that would be, for, for me, that would be a great place to sell. Um, I'd actually be surprised if we could get that high just with all the risks that are going on, um, that are out there, especially with the China trade. So anyhow, I'm going to leave it at that. I've got some more work to do tonight uh you're going to hear from me a few times this week we'll be tweeting you'll be hearing from uh my colleagues over across the pond in uh um for the the morning updates and uh you know, good luck trading this week and uh wish everyone a great week ahead make some money stay out of trouble this market is manic it is going from risk off to risk risk on to risk off and you know kind of every 12 to 24 hours so it makes for uh makes for very tactical trading which we're pretty good at so stick with us and uh you'll hear from us on the european open good luck all the best cheers